welcome to the module Sociology of Education 2601. Um, again, I'm your lecturer, Mrs. Mukwena, and welcome to Learning Unit 5. By the end of Learning Unit 5, you should be able to explain the triadic relationship between the early childhood setting and the family. You should also be able to discuss the influence of social development on the young child. You will be able to discuss the role of peer relationships on the social development of the young child. And lastly, you should be able to explain how cultural transmission and cultural acquisition influence a child's social development. So the question is, why are parents and school partnerships important? Why should parents and families work in hand in hand with the schools? So when there is a close home school relationship, parents can find successful techniques that teachers use to deal with challenging behaviors. Parents observe how their children relate to other adults and children. So when we work closely with parents, they observe how their children behave when they are around other young children. Parents also observe how their children behave uh, when they are around their teachers and other adults. Again, when parents observe their children, they get to know their children as social beings. They get to understand how their children relate and socialize with other children, and adults around them. Also, parents have access to the resources of the school and the community, which can be useful uh, to them in supporting their children to learn, develop, and become socially strong individuals. When parents and families form stronger links with the school, they develop a closer relationship with the teacher who can begin to get to know the child and their families better and thus be able to assist where necessary. So when the teacher uh, knows the families of the children in their classroom, it enables to develop a closer relationship with the families and they can get to know some um, characteristics and behaviors of the child from the parents that they did not know about. So now, as a great art teacher, you know that it is very important that we involve the parents and families in the education of their children. What is the teacher's role? What is your role as a great art teacher in supporting parents? What is it that you need to do what strategies should you employ to support parents and families? Well, you need to keep parents and families informed about the stages of child development. It is very important that parents are aware of how children develop. It is also very, very important that you inform the parents regularly on the development of their child and at what stage of the of development is their child at. As a teacher, you should also show parents and families how to enhance language and thinking skills. Educate parents and families about how children are socialized at each stage and what they can do to enhance the socialization of their children. So you can do this through your meetings. You can have a workshop with the parents and demonstrate and teach them and workshop them on how children are socialized and how children um, socialization takes place, looks like at every stage of development. You can also provide a list of books and toys that encourage children's creativity thinking and problem solving skills. So the parents, once they know what toys, what books, what resources to buy, to find 
um, to encourage children's creativity and problem solving skills, they have that they are empowered to also from their end encourage socialization and development of young children. As a teacher, you also need to ensure that parents and families are familiar with the program of the school. The theme for the week or a term, the songs, the rhymes, and all the other activities that are undertaken at the school so that the parents and the school can work together. So you can provide maybe at the beginning of the term, uh, provide the parents with the list of all the themes that will be done for the whole term or for the whole year, so that the parents will know in advance which themes their children are learning at school. This also helps and involves parents in the sense that they also have to look for resources that aligns with the theme that the teacher is teaching at the time. And as a teacher, you should also ensure that all themes, activities, songs, and rhymes are culturally appropriate and responsive to the diverse cultures that are prevalent in a great era context. So the way you choose your themes, your activities, your songs, and your rhymes, they should be very inclusive. They should be uh, uh, structured. They should uh, be in such a way that they speak to every culture. So you should find in here in South Africa, where we have um, different cultures, you can have um, you can find a list of songs in, in Kosa, a list of songs in Zulu, a list of songs in Susutu, just so that you accommodate each and every culture of the learners in your classroom. So how does uh, peer relationships influence uh, the socialization of, of young children? Peer relationships are formed when children begin to play and interact with children of the same age, which is very typical, which is very common of a great era classroom. Peer relationships are important to the child's social development as they begin to learn appropriate behaviors. They begin to share and they begin to take turns. Friends are very important as they are an important source of support for children, as making and keeping friends is important for children's social development. So children, when they interact with their friends of the same age, um, a lot of development is taking place. This is when they're learning to share, they're learning to wait for their turn, um, they learn appropriate behaviors, so peer relationships are very important. In your classroom as a grade R teacher, you need to make sure that there is a time where you allow for children to play in groups, to collaborate so that they learn um, all these social skills that are so important for the development of the child. Now, play plays a very big role in the socialization of the great Ara child. As a teacher, you need to create a lot of opportunities in your classroom for play to take place. Whether it is adult guided play or a free play, children need to be exposed to a wide variety of play opportunities. As this plays a role in the socialization of the young child. Play, when children play, they learn to communicate. So through play, children learn to communicate with peers and they express their ideas. And by communicating, they are also developing language. And through play, children learn to collaborate and work together. Many play activities require children to work together towards a common goal, fostering cooperation and teamwork. Conflict resolution. 
play often involves conflicts over rules or roles. Resolving these disputes helps children learn important skills in conflict resolution and compromise. And also relationships and friends and friendships are created during play. So it is very important that in your classroom, you create a lot of opportunities for children to play. In the great other classroom, there are different areas which create opportunities for children to collaborate and play. You have your fantasy play area where children can play together and communicate and learn to solve conflicts and create relationships and friendships. You also have your book area where the children can come together and um, dramatize, read stories and play together. So please create a lot of opportunities throughout the day, throughout the daily program that allows children to play as it plays a big role in the socialization of the young child. As a teacher, what is your role in the socialization of the young child? You need to help children to recognize their own needs. Allow them to choose who they want to play with. Do not dictate to the children and tell them who to play with and what to play with. Allow them to make decisions as about who they want to play with and what they want to play with. Also teach children to recognize each other's emotions and intentions which will lead to conflict resolution skills. Reflect with children on how their behavior affects others. Create a caring community in your class. In the great R context, all children need to be included, irrespective of culture, language, gender, or disability. Children need to feel accepted and loved for who they are. Parents and families need to be invited into the process of socialization. But our teachers and families share the responsibility of helping children to develop social skills as neither party can do this alone. Once again, the importance of parental involvement is emphasized. So it is your role as well to make sure that the parents and the families are invited and are involved in the process of socialization. Cultural transmission and acquisition and its influence on a child's social development. Now, children observe and participate in community rituals, celebrations, and daily practices, learning what is considered appropriate behavior in their culture. Community members serve as role models and children learn social roles and expectations by observing and interacting with them. Children acquire cultural norms and social roles through play activities like fantasy play. Cultural transmission and acquisition help children to develop a sense of belonging to a particular cultural group which is crucial for their social identity and self-esteem. How does a culturally appropriate curriculum look like? What is it that you need to do as a teacher to ensure that your curriculum is culturally appropriate? These are some of the things that you need to be aware of. Be cautious about using only your culture as a point of departure a reference point when teaching in a culturally appropriate way. Reflect on the diverse cultures in your class and plan accordingly. You need to get to know the parents and families of all children well. If a child's culture is different from yours, then find about their culture practices from their families and the child. In the morning when the parents come in, when you greet the parents, you could ask one or two things about the child's culture 
so that you can also include that in your daily practices. Get help from the families by getting information from them. Uh, things like photographs can give you information about um, children's cultures, holidays, stories, history and curriculum resources. Be creative as a teacher and create posters, materials and books that show the cultural diversity of children in South Africa and in your particular class. And if you are not in South Africa, you can also still create books, materials and posters that shows the cultural diversity of children in your context. Do not teach about race, ethnicity or culture in a way that excludes children and people. Teach about culture and heritage that should be inclusive in a way that respects individual strengths, traditions and values and does not exclude people or groups. So in a way, you should create a classroom that is inclusive, a multicultural classroom where you have accommodated every culture of children in your class. For instance, in your book area, you can have books from different races and cultures. Toys, ensure that your toys are not um, biased towards one culture, but you've got a variety of toys and resources so that you have a culturally appropriate curriculum. So this is a summary of Learning Unit 5. We looked at the triadic relationship between the early childhood setting and the family that influences the social development of the young child. We also focused on the importance of peer relationships on the social development of the young child. In focusing on how cultural transmission and cultural acquisition influence the child's social development, we looked at how the other teachers can infuse a culturally appropriate curriculum to ensure that children's diverse cultures are valued in the great era curriculum. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy going through learning unit five and understand socialization from a peer relationship point of view and a family and culturalism point of view. <laughs>